Adhikarna 3. Prana merges into the soul. Doubt. This much has been established, that the functions of one entity can be withdrawn into some other entity that is not its material cause, but not so can the entity itself be absorbed. Now, with regard to the text, the vital force into Tejas, fire, Chandogya 686, the consideration that arises is whether the function of the vital force is withdrawn into fire, just as the text literally implies, or is it withdrawn into the soul that is the master of this cage formed by the body and sense organs? Opponent. As to that, the vital force should get absorbed into fire, since the meaning of an Upanishadic text cannot be laid bare to doubts, and because it is improper to imagine something not heard of. Vedantin. This being the position, the aphorist explains... Sutra 4. So dhyakshe tarupagamadi biaha saha that prana adhyakshe merges into the presiding entity, that is, the self. Tat upagama adi biaha because of such facts as approaching that. Translation. That one, that is, the vital force, is known to be withdrawn into the ruler, that is, the individual self, from such facts as approaching that self at the time of death. That one, the vital force that is being considered, subsists in the ruler, in the individual self identified with the intellect and having ignorance, past works, and past experiences as its limiting adjuncts. That is to say, the activities of the vital force remain chiefly concerned with it. How is this known? From such facts as its approaching that self. For thus it is that another Upanishadic passage shows in a general way how all the pranas, organs, without exception, approach the ruler. All the organs approach the departing man at the time of death, when breathing becomes difficult. Brihadaranyaka 4, 3, 38. And in the text, when it departs, the vital force follows. Brihadaranyaka 4, 4, 2. It is specially shown how the vital force, having five functions, follows the ruler. And in the text, when the vital force departs, all the organs, pranas, follow. Ibidam. It is shown how the other pranas follow the vital force. Besides, by showing in the text, then the self remains equipped with the organs of knowledge. Ibidam. That the ruler has consciousness inside. It is made clear that the vital force, with the sense organs merged in it, subsists in that soul. Opponent. Since the Upanishad declares the vital force is withdrawn into fire, Chandogya 686, how can an erroneous meaning be asserted by saying that it goes to the ruler? Vedanta. That creates no difficulty, since in such activities as leaving the body, the soul plays the dominant part and any special point stated in other Upanishads has to be taken into account. Namaste. So here is another great example of the opponent missing the forest and getting hung up on the trees. <laughs> A nitpicking misinterpretation of a classic shloka or sutra <clears throat> because he's hung up on the details. Well, is this absorbed into that or is it the other way around or whatever, you know, arguing about these nitpicky points and missing the big picture. The big picture is that at the time of death, the self absorbs the subtle parts of the body into itself and leaves. And those subtle parts follow the self. 
to the next body according to its desire. Now, when he uh, made this translation, he quoted this passage from Brihadaranyakopanishad, uh, little pieces of it. But I think it's better to read the whole thing as a context, as a background for Shankaracharya's commentary on this sutra. So here it is. Brihadaranyakopanishad, section 4, chapter 4, verse 1. When this self becomes weak and senseless, as it were, the organs come to it. Completely withdrawing these particles of light, it comes to the heart. When the presiding deity of the eye turns back from all sides, the man fails to notice color. Verse 2. The eye becomes united with the subtle body. Then people say he does not see. The nose becomes united. Then they say he does not smell. The tongue becomes united. Then they say he does not taste. The vocal organ becomes united. Then they say he does not speak. The ear becomes united. Then they say he does not hear. The manas becomes united. Then they say he does not think. The skin becomes united. Then they say he does not touch. The intellect becomes united. Then they say he does not know. The top of the heart brightens. Through that brightened top, the self departs, either through the eye or through the head or through any other part of the body. When it departs, the vital force follows. When the vital force departs, all the organs follow. Then the self has particular consciousness and goes to the body which is related to that consciousness. It is followed by knowledge, work, and past experience. Verse 3. Just as a leech supported on a straw goes to the end of it, takes hold of another support and contracts itself, so does the self throw this body aside, make it senseless, take a hold of another support and contract itself. Verse 4. Just as a goldsmith takes apart a little quantity of gold and fashions another, a newer and better form, so does the self throw this body away or make it senseless and make another, a newer and better form suited to the manes or the celestial minstrels or the gods or viraj or hiranyagarbha or other beings. Verse 5. That self is indeed Brahman as well as identified with the intellect, the manas, and the vital force, with the eyes and ears, with earth, water, air, and the ether, fire, and what is other than fire, with desire and the absence of desire, with anger and the absence of anger, with righteousness and unrighteousness, with everything, identified as is well known with this, what is perceived, and with that, what is inferred. As it does and acts, so it becomes. By doing good, it becomes good, and by doing evil, it becomes evil. It becomes virtuous through good acts and vicious through evil acts. Others, however, say the self is identified with desire alone. What it desires, it resolves. What it resolves, it works out. And what it works out, it attains. Verse 6. Regarding this, there is the following verse. Being attached, he, together with the work, attains that result to which his subtle body or mind is attached. Exhausting the results of whatever work he did in this life, he returns from that world to this for fresh work. Thus does the man who desires transmigrate. But the man who does not desire never transmigrates. Of him who is without desires, who is free from desires, the objects of whose desire have been attained, and to whom all objects of desire are but the self. The organs do not depart. Being nothing but Brahman, 
he is merged in Brahman. So this is a beautiful and very complete description of the withdrawal of the self from the body. So when the self departs from the body, it brings with it all the sense organs in the form of their functions. Not the organs themselves, but their actions. Hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and so forth. So when all of these sense organs and their actions, their functions, are merged in the mind, then only does the self leave the body and everything goes along with it. The past actions, that is the karma, the future actions, that is the karma that is to manifest in the next body, and according to his desire, he attains a different type of body in a different world, or comes back again in the same world, <clears throat> depending on the quality of his desire. So what does this mean to us? It means that through study of the Vedas, sadhana, rituals such as puja, chanting mantras, and so forth, we should develop attachment for that which is higher and leave aside that which is lower of this earthly world, of this earthly body, and go to a higher realm and get a better body with better intelligence, huh? better quality of senses, better quality of sense enjoyment even. But the highest of all is one who merges in the Nirguna Brahman. And he doesn't go anywhere. He's not described as leaving the body because he simply disappears, merges into Brahman. And since Brahman is everywhere and in everything and actually is everything, he doesn't have to go. He doesn't have to change his location. He simply disappears, merges into Brahman right on the spot. So this is the ultimate. This is what happened to my sannyas guru, Jnana Shakti Swami. And so we can understand that the process of sadhana, Vedic study and so on, is meant to refine our desires. And then when we are sufficiently qualified, to let go of those desires completely because they have all been completely satisfied. And that is the ultimate destination of the sadhu, the realized being, and one who leaves this body to merge back into the original qualityless Brahman. Aum Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung Aung Namah Shivaya